Rub up your engines! Well, I'd warn Honda about this one. It turns out that GM is going to build Honda electric vehicles in Mexico and Tennessee. They're going to be crossovers for Honda and Acura. If you don't know it, GM and Honda entered a partnership earlier this year to use GM's Altium battery platform in Honda vehicles. The Honda crossover is going to be made at GM's Ramos Arispe Mexico plant, where GM builds Equinox and the Blazer. And the Acura is going to be built in 2024 at the Spring Hill, Tennessee factory, along with the 2023 Cadillac Lyric. So probably he's going to be the same vehicle, except it will say Honda on it instead of Cadillac, and they're being made by GM. So if you're thinking about buying one of those in the future, I'd be very cautious about buying a Honda badge GM electric vehicle. These guys are watering their brand name down. I think it's a very serious mistake by Honda to be doing this. I guess Honda just decided, oh, we don't want all the research and development on electric cars. We'll just piggyback with GM. They may come and bite them in the rear end in the future. Of course, only time's going to tell this, but old Scotty, hey, let me tell you, I'm staying away from that. I would not be buying something that one company makes, and then they have another one's brand. I guess they just don't want to make their own, just like Toyota didn't want to make sports cars. So they got BMW sports cars and call them Supras and Subaru ones and call them Toyota 86s. They're not. Or other people are making them. I don't think they should water their brand name down myself. Well, Hyundai's at it again. They're recalling 471,000 more cars because they might start on fire. They're telling the owners, for the time being, park them outside. Do not park them inside your garage because it might burn your house down. 2018 models, but also 2020 to 2021, Hyundai and Tucson SUVs. They have ABS systems that can short out internally and cause a fire, even if you're not driving the car. Now, if you think about it, what kind of a moron is designing these things? The ABS system could start on fire even when you're not driving the car. The ABS system should be totally inactive when the car isn't moving. It's not doing anything. If the car shut off, you don't need anti-lock braking. They're not going to lock up. They're just sitting there. <laughs> the car's not even running. Now, in September, they recalled 180,000 of these, and now they're recalling 470,000 more of them. As old Scotty said, Hyundai, Kia, maybe stay away from the Korean car manufacturers if you value your money, and in this case, perhaps, if you value your life and don't want to burn burn your house down by parking your car in a garage. <laughs> Okay, if you've got a reasonable amount of money and you hate stopping for gas, you might check out the Lexus LC500H. They say that it can go over 600 miles on one tank of gas. It can go 168 miles an hour with its V6 engine and its hybrid drivetrain. I've driven them. They ride very smoothly. And they've also souped up a lot of stuff. One of the things in their uh, automated transmission is that it downshifts into second gear instead of third when you're cornering, so you get more acceleration. It can drive zippier. So if you've got a relatively unlimited budget to buy a car and you hate stopping for gasoline, hey, you might check out the Lexus LC 500. H. Brass Master says, Scott, I got an 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, 4 liter. Vehicle won't turn over. All the accessories work. The starter relay clicks. Fuel pump primes. Check the battery. Maybe it needs a new battery. Maybe the terminals are loose. Do that. You'll always get some power coming through and you can hear it clicking. Generally, either your battery's gone, cables are loose, or you need a new starter. It's a 04. I'm assuming the starter's probably bad. Try jump starting it. If it does the same thing, just goes click, click. Odds are you need a starter. And a good trick that I always do for you is get a long pole or a metal rod or something and when somebody turns the key to the starting position and hold it hit the starter with pipe or a long piece of wood and if it starts to turn then then you know the starter's bad because you hit it then instead of going click it start, and tries or it does start then you know you need a starter for sure. I'd guess a starter that is old as 17 years old. If you never changed it, I'm sure it's gone bad now. 1980s car lover says, everyone's saying the Chevy Cavalier is a pile of junk, but my grandpa bought one in 2002 and has driven it for 20 years and still drives fine, which is right. I'm assuming your grandpa really takes care of his vehicles and doesn't drive like an absolute maniac. Now, the average American drives sort of like a maniac, and they don't maintain their cars very well. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I personally think a Chevy Cavalier is really an ugly-looking vehicle, but if he took care of it really well and got lucky, maybe got one that was built on a Wednesday when they weren't hungover from the weekend or getting ready for the next weekend, they could last if you really took care of them. Now, you don't tell the mileage that he's driven them. I have no idea how many miles he's gone. For the general American, they were kind of piles of junk. If you lived up north, they'd rusted. They were rust buckets. They would rust away. So... 
you know, generally they're not seen as a very good vehicle, but if you take care of anything, I know Canadians have bought those crazy European cars that the Russians made, the Ladas that they sold in Canada, and they liked them because they wanted a cheap little putt around car that got phenomenal gas mileage. Now those would have failed miserably in the United States. I've also known Americans who bought those little Geo Metros with the three cylinder engines, and they liked them because they got a little putt putt with a standard that got great gas mileage, they took care of it and it ran, but the average American, they burnt the engines out, the automatic transmissions were garbage, they could barely get out of their own way, so you got to look at the picture of everything, not just one person, especially if it's an older person that takes care of their vehicles and doesn't drive them hard. Generally, they were pretty much a massive failure, you notice they don't make them anymore. SK username says, I got a 2003 Mitsubishi Montero 2.8. I was driving two months ago, the transmission fluid overheated ran bad. I had it fluid replaced. It runs better. Seems to shift better, but the AT light is still blinking. When the AT light blinks, it means there is a transmission trouble code set in the computer. So you got to find a guy like me with the dealer level scan tool to plug it in and see what it says. Now, if it shifts okay and it goes okay, you might try this first yourself. You might just take both battery terminals off, leave them off for five minutes, turn the headlights on. The headlights won't come on when they're disconnected, but that will drain any of the capacitors in the computer system, reset everything and put it back on. If it stops flashing, great. It had a code and you got rid of it, but if it continues, use the flash or if it stops and then the flash comes back a few days later, get it scanned, email me the codes and I can analyze it and tell you what the codes mean. Got to get the information. When it's flashing, it means there's a code set in the computer. You got to get that code and then analyze it. Zach G2120 says, I just bought new tires had to put on. They're a name brand. Once it got on the freeway, it wobble left to right. It stays straight and doesn't lose control. My line is good. I had to balance check and it's good. My shocks and struts are new. I'm a jet engine mechanic and the greatest Navy in the world. These are concrete roads. My car never did it before. You had the tires put on and you're wobbling. If it didn't do that before you got those tires, it has to have something to do with the tires. Generally, it's the tires themselves. If you have tires put on and it starts doing a wobble it didn't do before, they're either not balanced right or they're bad tires. Now, if the guys rebalance them and they watch them balance them on the machine, because some of these idiots at tire stores don't know what they're doing. I see it every Every day. I went to one of these discount tire places, the NTW, NTB, whatever the heck they call themselves these days. I keep changing their names. Bought tires, did the same thing. Then I said, well, they're idiots. So I took it to my front end shop, Cotton Brothers. All they did was rebalance the tires and it went away. So it could be that simple. Could be you're dealing with idiots at the tire store. The other thing would be they didn't mount the tires right. So let's say they take the tires off and there's some dirt or crud inside where the lugs are and then they quick whip it on and they're not even anymore because there's dirt there then it will wobble that's why the real pros balance the tire on the car they got a machine that'll bounce on the car so it'll compensate for anywhere or anything that's on there that's the most efficient way to do it but most of the time it's the tire itself or they didn't mount it right or bounce it right when they put it on the car i don't know you didn't say where you went but i see these chain tire stores a lot of times you know they have idiots working there paying a minimum wage and they give them like a 50 cent bonus for changing four tires all at once. It's ridiculous what they pay some of these guys. So I would expect that it have to do with the tires. It's the only thing that would make sense. Good Scotty says, hey, is it ever okay to pour tepid water on your windshield to help melting extreme ice? That's a real iffy thing. It depends on how cold it is. If it's 40 below, no, don't even think about it because it will probably crack the windshield. If you have any little cracks, it will make the cracks bigger, right? The best thing to do is to cover your windshield with one of those covers or at least pull your wipers off so you can scrape the ice off or just warm the car up put it on defrost and walk away and then come back in 15 minutes and then the heat the engine and the defrost will melt all that ice off because there's a big temperature differential and that's all that matters and even if it's just tepid water if it's 40 below outside it could easily crack your windshield I mean when I lived in Niagara Falls and I was a kid yeah we were lazy we do that but it was rarely that cold most of the time a cold day would be like you know 20 20 degrees or something like that and it's usually okay to pour some we would just pour tap water on it would melt a lot of the ice that way if we were in a big big hurry but you're better off just starting a car up turning the defrost on walking away and it'll melt itself over time playboy 08 says so scotty i got an 05 ford explorer the advanced track is on i can't take it off i push the button for five seconds of driving pray it's just the switch you might just go get a switch put it in pray the switch has gone bad because if the switch hasn't gone bad you got to pay a mechanic like me to hook up his fancy scan tool, analyze it all, figure out what expensive parts are needed. It can be a royal pain in the wah. 
zoo. Now, let's say it's running normally, shifting normally, but the light's on. You could just ignore it. I mean, it is a 16-year-old Ford Explorer, and you don't expect any of those things to work anymore when they're that old, being a Ford and being electronics. You might just try the switch. What the heck? And that fixes is great. If not, you're going to be into some pretty expensive repairs if you really want that system to work. It's all computer controlled. It's very complex, and only a real mechanic with a bi-directional scan tool that can do bi-directional testing and analysis can figure out what's wrong, and most mechanics with that knowledge and that equipment charge about $140 an hour labor. So, try the switch and pray it's just that. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.